Toronto listed Mandalay Resources as a Canadian-based natural resource company with producing assets in Australia and Sweden and care and maintenance and development projects in Chile. And in Canada, it's undertaking a reclamation project. It's recently reported uh, fourth quarter results showing a 35% rise in production of gold. Good place to be in the market at the moment. Uh, chairman of the company is Brad Mills. He joins us now uh, with some more of the company. It's great to talk to you about Mandalay because um, I'm interested specifically in gold, but also antimony, which is another part of the business that you have. Before we get to the recent earnings report, uh, I just want you to explain exactly how you deliver shareholder returns and what the spread of the business is between gold and antimony. Sure, so we, we in, um, in 2020, we produced uh, just over 100,000 ounces of gold and about 3,500 tons of antimony. So uh, about 75% of our revenue is gold-based and about maybe 25% is uh, today is antimony-based. And what about the, 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 the project split between Australia and, and Sweden uh, and also the other projects you've got in Chile and Canada? I'm also interested to find out what you're doing there uh, in order to, to, to turn business. Sure. So, so the the, the Clusterfield Antimony uh, Gold Mine is the one in Australia. It produces around between fifty and sixty thousand ounces a year of gold, and it, all the antimony that we produce comes from there. It's a it's a it's a massive sulfide type ore body with uh, with high grade antimony and gold grades. And in Sweden, we're today producing right around fifty thousand ounces of gold uh, with just a little bit of silver byproduct. Uh, in 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 um, Chile, we have a shut-in operation at uh, Cerro Bio, which is a silver gold mine. We are actually going to restart that uh, in the first quarter of this year and start producing a silver gold concentrate again from Chile. So, so we're, we're bringing that operation back online in the first quarter in a small way. And the reclamation business in, in Canada, is that producing at the moment? No, the, the, we, we, as one of our acquisitions, we picked up a, a project which was a very famous old gold mine called the Lupin Mine in the Northwest Territories. And we've decided to take that uh, uh, to ultimate uh, reclamation and closure and entered into a formal agreement with the, the Nunavut government and the Canadian government to complete that reclamation, which started last year, and we actually should finish much of it this year, which is removing all the surface infrastructure, all the the structures and buildings and and um, uh, covering and, and closing all of the tailings facilities and revegetation. So hopefully in a year from now, if you visited that site, you wouldn't actually be able to tell it was there. So that's the, that's the goal there. Right. Okay. Um, as I said, it's it's been a good end to the, the fiscal year. Before we get into the numbers themselves, um, what does antimony do? Because as I said, goals fairly um, explainable, but um, what do you use Antimony for? Who do you sell it on to? What do they use it for to um, make money ultimately and presumably some sort of production process? Sure. So it's not a big market. It's a, maybe a 250,000 ton annual market. Uh, we sell all of our antimony concentrates to Chinese smelters and they, they turn it into antimony metal and the, or, or antimony trioxide. And the antimony trioxide is used globally as a fire retardant, and it's it's added uh, as a um, to a wide variety of mainly fabrics, but plastics as well. So, um, if you look at your computer and the plastics in your computer, they will generally have an infusion of antimony trioxide that prevents them from burning in a fire. And the same thing with curtains and mattresses and rugs. Uh, so it has a, a very dilute solution of antimony trioxide. It goes into a very wide variety of household products. And it's used to uh, pre prevent fires or, or materials from burning in a fire and, and as a fire hazard. The other major use is in advanced electronics. It, it is also a, uh, an important semiconductor material and it, and it is used to produce um, uh, certain kinds of very high performance semiconductors. That's the, probably the, the fastest growing portion of the market is the electronics market. And the more traditional market is the household market. Let me bring a, a share price up, um, showing what's what's happened uh, w with the Mandalay share price. Because at the beginning of uh, beginning of, of last year, or this time last year, there's something like around about fifty two cents. Here we are now at two twenty four, uh, considerably higher than we were this uh, this time last year. And as I said at the back end of last year, you produced these these good numbers. Um, do you see more of what you saw at the back end of 2020 in terms of the reported figures carrying on into 2021? Or was that just the culmination of what was an exceptional and standout year that's unlikely to be repeated? So we actually expect to do better in 2021 than we did in 20, uh, 2020 for a couple of reasons. 
2020 was a transitional year for us at Kosherfield. We were just bringing the new high-grade Yule deposit online, and and we will have a full year of production from Yule. Uh, so so that actually should boost production. And we also are starting to see the first production from the Aurora vein in Sweden, which is also higher grade. And those uh, and it's shifting our grade profile considerably across the company. So so we're expecting maybe 10 to 15 percent higher production in 2021 20, than we had in 2020. Uh, Anemone will be about the same. We're higher gold grades, but about the same kind of antimony production. So we would expect the, the performance year on year to continue to improve throughout throughout 2021, uh, and and so we would we would hope that um, we not you know obviously gold price plays a fact is a factor, but we would hope to be able to um, duplicate or even do better than we did in 2020. How do you see the gold price moving? What are your analysts uh, telling you about the direction of that? And what do you how how strong is your your balance sheet? Because Clearly, you've got costs in, in Canada that have got to be resolved. Presumably, ultimately, that's going yeah. to end up costing the business money. But um, what about in, in terms of shareholder return, I think I'm trying to get at really in terms of how you're delivering returns to shareholders. Uh, and does the gold price need to be higher than where it is in order to get you to where you want to be in terms of shareholder delivery? So, so um, we're, we're the, the balance sheet improved rapidly in 2020. We we generated about 95 million dollars of EBITDA uh, in the year, and and we paid down about uh, 35 million dollars of debt. We we have today at the at the year end we ended up with about in sort of 35 million dollars of cash and 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 a, and uh, uh, a net a net debt of about 30 million. So we expect the the company should go uh, debt free by the middle of 20, 2020. So the balance sheet would be in very strong shape, and uh, and and we would you know at that point starting to be able to, uh, or we are generating a significant amount of, of free cash flow that would be available for shareholder returns, direct and whether it goes to dividends or share buybacks, or uh, new projects that we might might take on as a business. So. So the balance sheet has been improving dramatically over the last last year and this year. Cash operating costs are well below $1,000 an ounce. So they're kind of in the $800 an ounce range, I think, for all of, of um, 2020. So so we are obviously benefiting from the high gold price, but we certainly don't need it to, to deliver strong results uh, going into 2021. And our exploration program uh, was starting to show very successful uh, results both at both projects. Um, and we've issued a number of announcements recently on, on um, additional high-grade mineralization intercepts at Kosherfield. And you should expect more of that from both properties in the first quarter of this year. So, so we uh, anticipate that, that um, um, we will be able to continue to uh, accelerate our growth from our organic uh, properties today and from, from uh, near mine exploration. Uh, uh, so I think things look pretty good. Yeah, what the, the new projects you're talking about, you intending to grow those organically or are you looking to acquire uh, to, to bring on some yep. even possible sort of production assets onto your onto your uh, books? So the, main, the, the I think the first effort is organic growth. It's, it's really get the most out of the existing capital facilities. And then it's really a question of looking at, do we see anything that it warrants either expansion and kind of major capital expansion or or is it, a project that we could use that free cash flow to to build, and, and so I think we have that strategic decision in front of us. Um, going back to your earlier question about gold price outlook, uh, I think I think we're we have been for the last couple of years in a, uh, a view that we're in a uh, the gold prices in progressive growth, and and that gold supply globally is declining on the mine side. So we see uh, sort of year on year two to three percent decline in global gold production, which is. Um, irreversible at this point in time for probably the next three or four years. And so your supply side is shrinking at the same time you have the fiat currencies becoming you know, more and more, um, a lot more of them being produced by the governments. So whether it's the U.S. government and the huge deficit spending or the Europeans. So we we generally think that that, that real assets and gold being one of the major ones will will progressively benefit from that that fiat currency devaluation. And mm -hmm. and and so we would expect gold, you know, tick up $100, $200 uh, per ounce per year over the next couple of years at least.
Interesting. Okay, look, Brad, we'll leave it there. But thanks indeed uh, for joining us. Let's look at Mandalay Resources. Interesting story. Um, and Timothy, we don't hear an awful lot about that. But gold, of course, uh, front and centre of opinion at the moment. And indeed, for those who want to get into the market, uh, good uh, point, according to Brad Mills. He's the chairman of Mandalay Resources. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.